You got a character to play. Are they a caregiver or a hero? Maybe they're a sage or an orphan or a magician or a rebel. Let's discuss 12 major archetypes that most characters fit in and what makes them tick. Join me after the bump. What is an archetype? It's, it's basically a broad category that encompasses uh, a certain type of character. Most characters in plays and movies and literature fit into one or more of these 12 archetypes. So let's get started. A sage is a wise, usually old mentor that helps the protagonist discover something about themselves, train in a skill or learn something new about the world. They are knowledgeable, intelligent, and analytical. Their motto is, the truth will set you free. Now they seek out knowledge and information and they indulge in self-reflection, meditation, and understanding thought processes. They are free thinkers who always have words of wisdom, quotes, logical arguments ready to teach. They are usually a very calming presence and they are great listeners and advisors. Now they most fear being duped or misled and they don't appreciate ignorance in themselves or in others. Now, the sage's weaknesses include perfectionism, getting lost in the details forever without ever taking any action, or not seeing the forest for the trees. They can also get caught up in logical conundrums and contradictions. They often can't solve their own problems, and sometimes the mistakes they make can have grave consequences. Now you can see the sage represented in various characters, experts, scholars, detectives, advisors, thinkers, philosophers, academics, researchers, planners, professionals, mentors, translators, shaman, teachers, and contemplators. Innocents are imaginative, trusting, hopeful characters. They have faith in the world and in people in general. They try to help others, and they do the right thing no matter what. They are loyal, honest, truthful, and down to earth. Their motto would be, I cannot tell a lie. They follow the rules, and they just want to be happy. They are not harmful to others, they wouldn't hurt a fly, and if they did, they would be so upset about it. Innocent's desire to get to paradise or to live in some utopia. They long for that happy ever after ending. Now, what do innocents fear? They fear being left out, abandoned, or being unhappy. They fear getting punished, or they fear doing someone wrong. Weaknesses can include the fact that they're boring, they're naive, they're easily taken advantage of. They often lack physical strength and street smarts. And they can't handle the brutality and the cynicism of the world, and they have often been sheltered from it. An innocent can be a child, a dreamer, a romantic, a naive, a hopeful, a mystic, a traditionalist, a cockeyed optimist, an idealist, or a muse. The explorer is an individualist who seeks out adventure and new horizons. Don't fence me in is their motto. They long for freedom and they boldly go beyond the limits. They seek to find out who they are by exploring the world. They like to journey and travel and seek out new experiences and escape from boredom. They are autonomous, ambitious, and true to themselves. They really just want to experience a better, more authentic, and more fulfilling life. They really fear being or getting trapped and they hate conformity, they fear that empty feeling inside. They also tend to search for perfection, so they are often restless and they're never satisfied. You will find the explorer in anyone who is a seeker, an iconoclast, a wanderer, an individualist, a pilgrim, an explorer, an archeologist, an adventurer, a pioneer, or a generalist. A ruler's primary concern is power and control over those around them. They try to make family, community, or society abide by their rules by exercising some form of power. Now they can be prosperous and benevolent, responsible leaders who are stable and strive for excellence, or they can become strict, draconian tyrants. 
They tend to have plenty of reasons why everyone around them should listen to them. They do what they must to keep the peace and are usually pretty good communicators. Now, a ruler doesn't actually have to rule. They can be other types of characters who seek power and control over other people or just one person. A person can exert power by trying to seduce someone, for instance. Or they can manipulate somebody into doing something that they don't want to do. Rulers fear chaos and not getting their way. They also fear being overthrown and can easily become paranoid about plots against them. Their weaknesses can be a tendency toward authoritarianism and the inability to delegate. They also tend to continually want more power than they have. They can become misers as well. So rulers manifest in any character that is the boss, the leader, an aristocrat, a king, a queen, a politician, a role model, a manager, administrator, seducer, patriarch, judge, ambassador, or sovereign ruler. The caregiver's goal is to help and protect others. They are nurturing, caring, compassionate, and generous. They have big hearts, and they commit selfless acts of kindness. We think of them as having a motherly instinct, but they can be parents of either sex. They can be spouses, and friends, and lovers. They would do anything to protect their child, their friend, their lover, even by sacrificing their own comfort or their own lives. They love their neighbor as they love themselves. Now, a caregiver will fear selfishness and ingratitude and the harshness of the world. A caregiver's weakness is that they can be easily exploited by others. And sometimes they turn into martyrs, constantly reminding everyone of their sacrifices. They have one-track minds and they value others' survival and well-being over their own. Now, they will manifest in the following types of characters. The saint, the altruist, the mother, the father, the helper, the supporter, the good Samaritan, the guardian, the angel, and the healer. The creator is often an artist or an artisan type, but sometimes they can be a godlike character. They look to create something that will endure the passage of time and leave a legacy. Their goal is to realize their visions and they are inexhaustible in their pursuits. They want to make things that make life easier for other people. Their motto is, if you can imagine it, it can be done. If you build it, they will come. Now, they try to develop their artistic skills all the time. They create culture. They are clever, nonconformist, self-sufficient, and imaginative in their approach to life. They love to transform and transmute things to create something new. They are afraid of mediocrity or of failing to execute a plan or failing to leave their mark on the world. Their weaknesses are perfectionism. They sometimes make bad solutions and bad decisions. They can spend more time thinking than actually doing, and they bury themselves in their work, and they often prioritize their work over human relationships. They also sometimes have difficulty communicating their vision to others. You will see the creator manifest in the following characters, the artist, the inventor, the innovator, the musician, the writer, actor, the director, the dreamer, the visionary, the storyteller, the entrepreneur, and the tinkerer. Now let's take a brief moment here. I just wanted to let you know that I have this free ebook on memorization. It helps you memorize almost anything. I am giving it away for free. All you gotta do is sign up for the Augmented Actor email list. It's totally free, there's no catch. You can download it for free. The information's on your screen and down in the description below. Let's get back to these archetypes. The magician can be good and wise or manipulative and evil. They are visionary characters that can see what a person could be and can make that come to pass. They have a strong desire to understand the fundamental laws of the universe. And they strive to make dreams come true and to try to create win-win situations. They make things happen through magic, trickery, illusion, strategy, passion, and historical understanding. They regenerate and renew themselves and others. They are inquisitive and enlightened. Their abilities are beyond the comprehension of those around them, 
even if they aren't magical in nature. Now, unlike sages and mentors, magicians wish to impose their will on the world around them. They aren't selfless. Magicians fear negative consequences resulting from their magic, and they fear making things worse. They can also fall into being manipulative or destructive. They are often quick to anger if they don't get their way, and they can be full of hubris and pride. Here's some characters that have magician-like qualities. The visionary, the catalyst, the charismatic, the shaman, the healer, the medicine man, the illusionist, the alchemist, the engineer, the scientist, the chemist, the wizard, the sorcerer, or the mystic. The hero usually is the protagonist of a story. He is often honorable, brave, and tenacious. The hero will never give up against all odds in their fight for power and honor. They are courageous and they wish to prove their worth in the world through courageous acts. Their motto is, where there's a will, there's a way. They will use their mastery to try to improve the world in some way. They tend to find or build strength and they are competent with physical and mental acuity. They'll do anything to avoid losing. They are confident, they are collected, and they are always ready. Heroes can fear things, <laughs> and their biggest fear is weaknesses in themselves, vulnerability, or being labeled a chicken. Chicken, bark, bark. They can also have weaknesses. They can often be arrogant, cocky, and egotistical. They often look for a battle where there is none, and they can tend to create conflict and see the rest of the world as something to overcome or battle. They also often underestimate their enemies. Some examples of hero-type characters are the crusader, the rescuer, the superhero, soldier, slayer, winner, team player, liberator, warrior, athlete. The rebel lives by their own moral code, and they break rules and laws that don't work for them. They question and resist authority, and they can be impulsive and uncompromising in nature. Their motto is freedom or death. The world sucks, so let's change it. They can be radical or revolutionary, and will often protest the powers that be. They desire revenge or revolution or shaking up the status quo. Their goal is to overturn whatever isn't working. Now they seek to disrupt, destroy, shock, and disturb. They will speak their minds, but they can also be subversive loners. They provoke people, and they don't care at all about the opinions of others. They go against the grain of society and aren't easily pressured or influenced. But if given the chance, they can inspire the masses. Rebel characters are afraid of being powerless or ineffectual. They have certain weaknesses as well. They may have a tendency toward crime or going over to the dark side. They are seen as outrageous or dangerous by others. They can become self-destructive and they often don't have much power or a clear direction forward. You will see a manifestation of the rebel character whenever you see a revolutionary, a wild man, a misfit, an outlaw, a criminal, a maverick, a reformer, a gambler, an activist, a villain, a protester, a bad boy, a loner, or a gangster. The Joker is full of joy and fun and silliness. They are fun to be around. Everyone seems to like them. They are often wise and they make good confidants and advisors, but they do so by using humor and flippancy. They tend to enjoy life and they have deep souls. Now their motto in life is, life is too short, you only live once. They desire to live in the moment with full enjoyment. They seem primarily concerned with having a great time and lightening the load of the world. They are comfortable being the center of attention and speaking their minds and making light of anything. They often play, they crack jokes, they come up with witty or funny retorts. They tend to break down other people's barriers and they ignore social graces. Jokers fear being bored or appearing boring to others or living a humorless life, being part of the status quo. Now on a negative side, they can act frivolously 
They can be unreliable in times of need. They can be lazy slackers who waste time. They can be irresponsible or insensitive to others. They might not be able to read the room, so to speak. They may refuse to take sides, and they often can't take anything seriously. Sometimes they use their humor to mask inner sadness or depression or evil intentions. They also might be lewd or greedy or selfish in nature, and they are constant, constantly distracted. Some types of characters that are joker-like are the fool, the trickster, the comedian, the goofball, the sidekick, the clown, the entertainer, the provocateur, the shapeshifter, the geek, the drag queen, the prankster, the practical joker, the court jester. In addition to being an actual orphan, an orphan can also be a regular guy or an everyman type character. They are often parentless children or adults who tend to fend for themselves. Their journey is to discover how they fit in and what they are meant to do. Now they believe that all people are created equal and they desire to connect with others. They can be sheltered and they can be loners by nature, but with a strong urge to find where they belong. They represent the common man. They are down to earth and they usually follow the rules. They like to blend in, but they are also survivors and they have empathy for other orphans and commoners. Now, orphans are afraid of abandonment or being ostracized from a group, which can result in feeling like a loner. They are afraid of standing out from a crowd as well as not being included in the crowd in the first place. They also fear being misunderstood. The negative side of the everyman or the orphan is a tendency of losing their own identity in order to blend in. They might stay in superficial relationships for long periods of time. They never take risks in life and they don't speak out against wrongdoing. They often carry open emotional wounds and they want others to take care of their lives for them. They lack self-confidence and this can lead to disappointment or playing the victim. The orphan also may have a cynical side and may be a good manipulator. So some examples of orphan-like characters are the good old boy, the person next door, the realist, the working stiff, the solid citizen, the good neighbor, the servant, the advocate, the networker, the administrator, the average Joe, the beggar, or the street urchin. The lover desires to be a partner or support the one that they love the most. They see the object of their affection as the only one, and they are devoted to them. Their motto might be, I only have eyes for you. They seek out intimacy and experience with a friend or lover, and they want to be in a relationship with a person, but it could also be a career or the surroundings that they love. They work toward becoming more physically and emotionally attractive. They are open with their feelings. They have passion and gratitude and appreciate commitment and enjoy romance. They love to feel loved and they love beauty. Now lovers fear being alone, being unnoticed, feeling unwanted or unloved. And a lover's weakness can manifest in a desire to please others at their own expense. And their love can easily turn into an addiction or an obsession or a willingness to commit harm or self-harm in order to get the attention of the object of their love. Characters that are lovers traditionally are the partner, the friend, the intimate, the enthusiast, the sensualist, the spouse, the companion, the hedonist, the matchmaker, the romantic, the slut, and the obsessed. What character archetype do you feel represents you most of all? Let me know down in the comments below. You might see some other videos on your screen right now. You can also subscribe and make sure you hit like if you like this video, share it with your actor friends. And I will hope to see you next time.